Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just want to correct what the brother said. Um, I am not a scholar of Islam. Okay. Subhanallah, you have many sheikhs who are going to be speaking today. Uh, but I am a brother from Manchester, England. And I'm actually been calling people to Islam. So maybe you can actually benefit some, from some of my experience especially here in Africa as I've been traveling to Africa now for about 15 or 16 years but it's very important in Islam that we understand who is a scholar because in this day and age we have many people who get deluded and misguided by following people who they actually think are scholars so we must know and be able to distinguish between uh, who are the people of knowledge so I'm here today just to speak to you about the responsibility of every Muslim. And this responsibility is the dawah and the calling to Islam. You know, we don't have to be a scholar to save souls. Every single one of you has a responsibility, which is to call non-Muslims and also Muslims to Islam. Now I'm sure that every single one of you in this room will have a friend or a family member or a cousin who doesn't pray. I'm sure that every single one of you on a daily basis you come across Muslims or non-Muslims, people who are not Muslim. Did they hear the message of Islam? And this is something that you personally have to uh, take care of and address inshallah so just before we begin I want to remind you I want you to think about the hereafter because this is the purpose of life the purpose of life is to gain success in the hereafter a lot of the time we are short-sighted we are thinking about our next month wages how much we're going to earn in the next year how we're going to pay for our house? How we're going to buy a new? How are we going to buy a new car, or do business, or get married? But we must always remember the goal of this life is to get to the final destination of Jannah. And another goal in life is to stay out of the Jahannam. And. One of the things that Allah does in the Qur'an is He constantly reminds us of both Jannah and Jahannam. And I want to give a small description of Jahannam today. Because a lot of the time, the talks are about Jannah and the rewards of Islam. But sometimes we need to be reminded of Jahannam as well. Now I've actually got some of the descriptions of Jahannam which are mentioned in the Qur'an and the Sunnah and this is just to allow us to picture the ultimate failure of most human beings most human beings who have ever lived will go to Jahannam most human beings to ever have lived do not believe and worship and submit to Allah It said that there is a stone as big as seven camels and it will be thrown into the hellfire and it will take 70 years to reach the bottom of Jahannam. 70 years! Can you imagine the size of Jahannam? The fuel of Jahannam is men and stones. People's faces will be boiling. I know it's a bit early for this. <laughs> You've just woke up and we're speaking about Jahannam. But this is something we should be reminded of every single day. Scalding water will be put on our bodies. Melted copper will be poured on our heads. Our feet will be boiling and our brains will be boiling. 
Subhanallah. The food of Jahannam will be the flesh of the people. Every single person, everyone, everything is in the state of loss. What is loss? Ultimately, the loss is Jahannam. But then Allah tells us the way to free ourselves from Jahannam. He says, except those who believe, those who believe and do good deeds. So two things, belief and good deeds. But then he also adds that it's also required to invite to the truth and encourage people to be patient. This is so important because in this surah, Allah is showing us that da'wah, calling to the truth, is our responsibility as Muslims. And ultimately, if we don't call to the truth, we will be in the state of loss. SubhanAllah. So da'wah is calling non-Muslims to Islam and also encouraging the Muslims to be patient. Pray the Salah, pay your Zakat, travel to the Hajj. All these things are required. Commanding the good and forbidding the evil. The Prophet peace be upon him told us that if you see an evil, you have to change it with your hand. And if you can't change it with your hand, change it with your mouth. Change it with your tongue. And if you can't change it with your tongue, the smallest thing you can do is at least hate it in your heart. These days, we see many things that are wrong. But we don't say anything. We don't do anything. And sadly, we don't even hate it in our heart now. We have to, when we see something bad, we have to hate it. The minimum we have to hate it in our hearts. How do we call to Islam? Allah tells the messenger in the Quran, He orders the messenger to say, Kul hadihi sabili Allah Ala basiratin ala man ittabani Allah orders the messenger to say my way is to invite to Allah with basira with certain knowledge from this ayah we can tell that the way of the messenger the way of all the messengers was to invite to Islam. How do they invite to Islam? With knowledge. So one of the formulas for da'wah is that Muslims, we have to seek knowledge. We have to seek knowledge from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the method of giving da'wah. A lot of the time you see Muslims, they're making their own method. They're calling to Islam with many ways that are not from the Sunnah. It's so vital that you call to Islam with absolute certain knowledge. Basira. In this ayah, Allah tells the Messenger, Say, my way is to invite to Islam. Mine and everyone who follows me. SubhanAllah, if it wasn't enough to just be the way of the messenger, for us to want to follow the messenger. Allah also elaborated and told us that even the people who claim to follow the Prophet, peace be upon him, it is also your way. It's your way to invite to Allah with certain knowledge. SubhanAllah. 
When I first came across this ayah, when I first became a Muslim, this ayah woke me up because it showed me that dawah is the responsibility of every single one of you. It's not only the way of the Prophet, but the way of every single Muslim. If we claim to follow the Prophet, peace be upon him, then we have to call to Islam. We have to call to Allah. Ibn al-Qayyim, with the tafsir of this ayah, he said, if you don't invite with certain knowledge, with basira, and if you don't invite to Islam, you're not on the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him. SubhanAllah. So dawah is the responsibility of every single one of us. How do we give dawah? There's many ayah in the Quran showing us the method. Allah mentions, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom, with hikmah, and good preaching. Hikmah is with the Quran and the Sunnah. Good preaching is using the authentic stories from the Quran and the Sunnah. The things that are going to relate to people. The things that people can relate to. The wisdom and the good preaching. Allah also mentions in the Quran. He tells us specifically how to give da'wah to the people of the book. In Nigeria, you have so many Christians. You have a church nearly on every corner of the streets. I was coming from Abuja, I seen a huge church. It holds thousands of people. Many posters for, for the Christian da'wah calling people to Christianity. Where are our posters? Where is our da'wah? So Allah tells us in the Quran how to give da'wah specifically to the people of the book. He mentions he mentions, don't argue with the people of the book. Don't argue with them, except in the best way. A lot of the time, especially in Africa, you see in these debates, debates, debates. And people have been debating the same Christians for 20, 30 years. Sometimes the debate can actually push, push someone further away. So Allah tells us, don't argue with the people of the book except in the best way. And then He tells us the best way to give da'wah. He says, Tell them to say, we believe what was sent down to us and sent down to you. This is the first part of the da'wah to the people of the book. Speaking about the revelation of Allah, correcting them on their mistake. Today the Christians, they follow the Bible. But the Bible is not from Allah. Did the Quran tell us that Allah revealed the Bible? No. He revealed the Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil. The Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil was a direct wahi, a direct revelation. A kalam Allah, a kitab Allah sent down from Allah. Not the Bible. The Bible is... It's like a seerah written by people, written by human beings, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So Allah tells us the best way to give da'wah. He says, tell them we believe what was sent down to us, the Qur'an. We believe in the Qur'an, the direct revelation. It was the word of Allah. It's not authored by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's not authored by the Sahaba. It's not authored by the scholars. 
It is sent down from the creator of the universe. And the Bible? No. So we can explain to the Christian the Islamic perspective, the correct perspective of the revelation which was sent down. That Allah sent the Torah to Musa. It wasn't authored by Musa. It wasn't authored by the companions of Musa. And it wasn't authored by the scholars. It was given to Musa. The same with the Zabur. The same with the Injil. These were direct revelations which Allah revealed to them. So Allah, in this ayah, Allah is telling us, even before Tawheed, we are establishing the basis of proof. We are establishing the basis for our beliefs. So he tells us to explain what was sent down to us and sent down to them. The correct perspective of revelation. Secondly, in this ayah, he tells us to then explain to them that our God and their God is one. This is the subject of Tawheed. Tawheed is the basis of the da'wah. In this day and age, we see many people, they argue about everything in Islam. They will tell the non-Muslim about all the misconceptions, how good the hijab is, how good the beard is, how Islam is very nice. But often when the non-Muslim leaves the Muslim, they don't know anything about Allah. The da'wah has not been done if Tawheed has not been conveyed to that individual. Tawheed is explaining the correct understanding of Allah. We have people who are worshipping graves. We have people who are wearing amulets. People who are doing shirk. People who are doing sihr. People who are doing juju. This is shirk. And these things will take someone outside of Islam. This is very dangerous. So Tawheed is at the basis of the da'wah, explaining to the Muslims and the non-Muslims the oneness of Allah. Worship Allah alone. SubhanAllah. This is the message that brought me to Islam. When I understood Tawheed from the Islamic perspective, that Allah is truly one, we don't worship Jesus. We don't worship Muhammad. We pray directly to Allah. This is the purest religion. This is the only pure religion on the planet. SubhanAllah. And finally, in the same ayah, Allah gives us the third point of da'wah. So the first... He tells us to say, we believe what was sent down to us and sent down to you. And our God and your God is one. And the final part is to explain to them that we are Muslims. We are Muslims who submit to Allah. Because when we're explained that our God and your God is one, this is just clarifying the correct perspective of Allah. But belief in Allah is not enough. Islam is not to believe in Allah. It's to worship Allah alone. It's to submit to Allah. Shaitan believes in Allah. Shaitan believes in Allah. He is dealt with Allah. He believes in Allah. He even makes dua to Allah in the Quran. He calls Allah his Rabb, his Lord. But he's not a Muslim. Why? Because he doesn't submit to Allah. Submitting to Allah in all aspects of our life. Not just praying five times a day. Not just having a Muslim name. Not just fasting Ramadan. But all areas of our life. 
with our family life, our social life, our work life, submitting to Islam, how Allah and His Messenger have guided us to the best correct way. It's also important to explain to the people of the book, to the Christians, that all the other messengers were also Muslim. Because they have this concept that we are like a new sect, that we came after Jesus, we came after Musa. We are a new sect, a misguided sect. No, we have to explain to them that Islam is not a new religion. Islam has been there since day one. Islam started with Adam. Musa was a Muslim. Isa was a Muslim. They were all Muslims submitting to Allah. And another ayah that brought me to Islam was the one speaking about Ibrahim saying that he is not Jewish or Christian, he's a Muslim. SubhanAllah, Allah mentions in the Quran, Ibrahim salam, he was not Jewish or Christian. He was a Muslim. When I was a non-Muslim, I've never heard a Jew or a Christian claiming that Ibrahim was Jewish or Christian. Yet all Jews and Christians believe in Ibrahim. So the logic for me was, what was the religion of Ibrahim? I want to follow that religion. Ibrahim salam submitted to Allah. And this is what a Muslim is. So in the da'wah for people of the book, we have to call them and explain to them the correct basis of belief. The Qur'an and the Sunnah. This is where we derive our belief. Our Aqidah from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Our belief doesn't just come from our whims and desires. Allah has revealed to us the fine details of our Aqidah. Islam, the six pillars of Iman, the belief in Allah, the angels, the books, the prophets, jihad, the, the, the final day, and also the divine predestination, the Qadr of Allah. No religion in the world has such details about these articles of faith. The names and attributes of Allah, the details and descriptions of the angels, the details of the book, the preserved Quran, stories of the prophets, some of the prophets that have never been mentioned with the people of the book. Like Saleh, Shu'aib, they were not mentioned. The people of the book did not know about these prophets. Find details about what happens as soon as we pass away. From the moment of death until we enter, inshallah, the gates of Jannah. Find details about everything. Details about the Qadr of Allah, how predestination works, which gives us Muslims contentment in our hearts like no other religion. No human being in this planet is as content as a Muslim who has Iman. We are happy when bad things happen and we are happy when good things happen. We say Alhamdulillah. Because we know that this life is a test. And ultimately we are being tested by who? The most merciful. When we are giving da'wah, we must be gentle. We must be careful not to push people away from Islam. Allah mentioned to the Prophet upon him that if he was harsh with the Sahaba, they would have fled away from him. Sometimes when you find the deen, when you start to practice Islam, people sometimes become very hard. They expect all their family members and all their friends to be practicing the same day. Even though it took you five years or ten years to find Islam, you expect your family members to accept Islam in one day. No. 
You have to be gentle. Be gentle with the people. The same way you would give dawah to your mother is the same way you have to give dawah to the people. Be gentle with them. Be patient with them. Inshallah, with time, they will come back to the worship of Allah. Look how Musa salam, was asked by Allah, ordered by Allah, to speak to Pharaoh. We have an Egyptian in the room, mashallah. <laughs> Brother Muhammad. We were speaking about Pharaoh yesterday. The worst human being ever to have lived. One of them at least. And his people were the worst. They enslaved the children of Israel for hundreds of years. They killed them. They were murdering them. And they chased them. How does Allah ask Musa salam, to speak to Pharaoh? With gentle speech. Perhaps he will fear Allah. Allah knows the outcome of Pharaoh. Allah knows the destination of Pharaoh. He knows Pharaoh is not going to listen. Allah knows everything. But Pharaoh still had, still had the opportunity. He still had the free choice to make that decision. SubhanAllah. Perhaps he will be reminded of Allah. That's what Allah said. Allah knew he wouldn't. He knew he was too stubborn to accept Islam. But he was still in charge of his own choices. There was still even hope. SubhanAllah. A lot of the time when we're giving dawah and people are not listening, we get disheartened. We know the story of the Prophet, peace be upon him, with, with, with his uncle. He wasn't listening. None of them, both of them were not listening. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, found this very, very difficult. They were not listening. And of course, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he knows Jahannam. He's seen Jahannam. He knows the reality of Jahannam. He was very distressed to know that if his uncles, his, his own blood, his own family was to not accept Islam, to know of their final destination. But the destination was not in the hands of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Guidance is from Allah alone. You as Allah tells us, you will not be held accountable for the disbelievers. But only a reminder. You will be held accountable for the reminder to them. You will be asked on Yom Qiyamah, why didn't you advise your brother? Why didn't you advise your sister? This is what you will be questioned about on Yom Qiyamah. Did you give the reminder? No matter how hard life is, we must stand up for the truth. Currently, subhanAllah, in every nation, the Muslims have always had difficulty. Look at the time of Musa a.s. They were enslaved, they were murdered. At the time of Isa a.s., they'd killed the children of Israel and killed many, many, many messengers. We are told that 124,000 prophets sent to humanity and most of them, a large number of them, were to the children of Israel. Why? Because they wouldn't listen. Time after time after time again, they would be given the message of Islam and they would go back. They would start worshipping a calf. They would start worshipping false idols. They just didn't learn their lesson. Isa at this point in time, they killed many messengers to the extent that Yahya 
peace be upon him, he was even slow in giving the message of Islam, where Allah tells him to hold on to the book of Allah. And Isa alayhi salam, when he was born, his first miracle was dawah. It was speaking and addressing the children of Israel. SubhanAllah, they had killed many messengers. Look how dangerous it was for Isa alayhi salam. They killed many people. Even as a baby, he was conveying the message of Islam. He was telling them that he's a slave of Allah. He's a servant of Allah. What did he say? He's been given a book, the revelation. Do you remember we spoke about what was sent down, the method of dawah? He was given a book and he told them to worship Allah. SubhanAllah. It's finished now. Yeah? Okay, inshallah. Just one last reminder before I go is don't judge the success of your dawah by how many people come to Islam or how many people listen to you. There were many messengers who were not listened to, who were ignored. Judge the success of your dawah by how many people you successfully convey the message to and how sincere your intention is, inshaAllah. We're going to leave it there, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.